You are listening to DJ Jim Lionheart. On Those Were the Days. Podcast radio show. What's it like outside today? The sun is shining, so I will say. It's Sugar Rush Radio. Hey, hey, hey. It's 29 degrees today. Oh, no. I am James, Prince of Additives and Defender of the Secrets of Castle Nostalgia. This is Creasy, my fearless friend. Useless secret powers were revealed to me the day I ate a bucket of Skittles. By the power of podcasts, I have the sugar rush. Creasy became the mighty Funkster, and I became... DJ Jim Lionheart, the most hyperactive DJ in the universe. Only three others share this secret. Our friend, a flying saucer, men at work, and that old drunk guy at the bus depot. Together we defend 80s nostalgia from the evil forces of social media. Family brought together by faith and given superpowers through the miracle of modern science. Hi, I'm DJ Jim Lionheart. You're listening to Sugar Rush Radio here on Those Were the Days podcast radio show, where we cover all pop culture from the 20th century. On this episode, I will be focusing on the music and talents of Haim Saban and Shiki Levy. Did I pronounce those names correctly? Only time will tell. Uh, they produced a lot, and I mean a lot. In fact, most of the 80s cartoons for boys and girls and also supplied songs for pop artists and a few songs that pop up on movie soundtracks so stay tuned to this channel for more information on them today's episode though part one will specialize in the action cartoons Uh, i guess you could say the boys cartoons i don't like to think of it like that i like to think of it just as the action cartoons because i know a lot of girls love them too So with no further ado, here is one of those cartoons that bridge the gap. I am Adora, He-Man's twin sister and defender of the Crystal Castle. This is Spirit, my beloved steed. Fabulous secrets were revealed to me the day I held aloft my sword and said, For the honor of Grayskull! A few others share this secret. Among them are Light Hope, Madame Raz, and Cowl. Together, we and my friends of the Great Rebellion strive to free Etheria from the evil forces of Horda. <laughs> Neutralize! 
can anybody tell me why the mask action figures were so expensive anyway? What was the deal with that? The only one I could afford to get was the mantra or whatever it was called. I'll try and drop in a picture right here. Uh, and that was only because the toy shop was closing down. We're having a sale on everything must go sale. Oh, that was a bittersweet day. Everything was dirt cheap, but it was so sad to see that toy shop go. Toy and hobby in Birkenhead for all you Merseysiders. Shout out to my Northwest peeps. All vehicles in the Wheel Warriors collection are sold separately. Some parts not for use with some toys. New from Mattel. Watch out! Beast Walker is coming! Can Trailblazer stop him? The ultimate basket coming soon. Thundering across the stars to save the universe from the monster minds. Jay searches for his father to unite the magic root and lead his lightning league to victory over the changing form of Saw Boss. Wheeled warriors explode into battle. Lightning strikes. There's a power that comes from deep inside of you. As every day you're reaching toward the light. And you know there's a long way ahead of you. But when your wills get you there. Hey there, thanks for listening to Those Are The Days radio show with your host DJ Jim Lionheart here, providing you with another Sugar Rush Radio. And this time we are doing the theme of Shuki Levy and Haim Saban, Haim Saban, no idea. Um, and their songs for all, practically every single action cartoon you can think of in the 80s and early 90s. There's my phone, bling, bling, bling. And uh, stick around to the end of the episode where I do a rant about Chase and the Wheeled Warriors. Um, it's a loving rant, and if you don't like it, don't listen to it. Drive 
those hyperspace, hyperactive thyroids and hyperactive kids on Hyper Sugar in the Hyper 1980s. Hi, I'm Hyper Jim, DJ Jim Lionheart on <laughs> Sugar Rush Radio here on Those Were The Days Radio Show with more obnoxious voices in the afternoon. Well, folks, we've only scratched the surface of the Haim Saban Shaki Levy legacy. But be sure to know that there will be more investigation of those guys in future episodes. I will leave you today on this episode with a couple more tracks that are not uh, Saban and Levy, but they are very much of that ilk of the power rock theme tune. Zachary Fox is about to become a powerful weapon against the forces of evil in outer space. My wife, my family, I've got to find them. With powerful thunderbolts launched from his bionic arm, Zachary will lead the Galaxy Rangers into explosive adventures. Doc Hartford, computer specialist. Yeah, I am ready. Doc fights for what's right and can find what's wrong in the most unusual computers. I'll just take this little chip. Keep up the good work, Clyde. <laughs> Nico, a galaxy ranger with a special talent. The human race faces grave dangers from beyond the stars. The alien treasure isn't here. This I gotta see. Wait, Doc. Amplified by her brain implant, her powers give her brilliant images of the past and the future. Holy guacamole! You first. The Goose. The fastest gun in space. Rangers stand by for action. Our time has come. Shane Gooseman, a military experiment gone astray. The Goose is a fearless mercenary who has found his place with the Galaxy Rangers. We're in trouble! I hear you. I'm on my way. A genetic chameleon man. When the goose's system is charged, his defenses evolve almost instantly to protect him against hostile environments. Nobody messes with my dolphins. What a human! In 2086, two peaceful aliens journeyed to Earth, seeking our help. In return, they gave us the plans for our first hyperdrive, allowing mankind to open the doors to the stars. We have assembled a team of unique individuals to protect Earth and our allies, courageous pioneers committed to the highest ideals of justice and dedicated to preserving law and order across the new frontier. These are the adventures of the Galaxy Rangers.
Okay, guys, welcome to the end of the episode, the bonus track, if you will, where if you're not interested in Jason the Wheeled Warriors, you can cut off now, go to the next episode. Um, but if you're a fan of 80s cartoons and you want to listen to my thoughts on it, well, stay tuned. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about Jason the Wheeled Warriors. It didn't seem like it important enough to make an entire episode about it, although I suppose we could do one day. I just wanted to talk about it. I bought it recently on DVD from Mill Creek Entertainment. Queasy knows them very well. Uh, any of you fans, any of you nerd geeks out there who buy your B-movies and so on, you'll know Mill Creek Entertainment. They're famous for sen selling their B-movie packs and things. Uh, so they got their hands on the rights to this, to distribute it, and they've put it in a very slim package but it's good because it's the complete series, it's dirt cheap. Uh, the packaging, mm, no comment, but you get a digital version of it, which is really cool, I think. Uh, so it's cheap and cheerful, really. Um, the quality of the picture is not good, you, but you get what you pay for. Um, it's a bit of a shame, but I've never been one of those obsessed with... Uh, HD and 4K and all that jazz. I like my cartoons a little bit grainy, but to be honest, I think you could probably just watch it on YouTube. Um, I think most of the episodes are on YouTube for free. Uh, the sad thing about this show, I'll say, uh, is that there is no conclusion, which is a real downer, because there are so many TV shows that don't get a conclusion, which is really annoying when the premise is about finding something or saving someone or it's that type of fugitive or like the hulk or something i think the hulk also never got concluded um it's a real shame we could do a whole episode on those and i'm sure we will there you go creasy make a note of that we'll make we'll talk about that next episode right so onwards to chase jim's thoughts about chase and the wheeled warriors Okay, so I loved all those saga cartoons where there was this big arc mission that they had to do. The Mysterious Cities of Gold, they had to find the Cities of Gold. And Doug Tanyan and what else? Ulysses 31, uh, which did actually get a conclusion, which is nice. I think, pretty sure it did. Yeah, if I remember rightly. Um... There were a whole there were there were a whole there was a whole spate of those long running sagas uh in the eighties in cartoon form. And uh, yeah, I always have fond memories of this show. And I, the way I remembered it was this. Uh there's a young teenage boy called Jace, and he's leading his lightning league, and he's got a little robot friend like all good teenagers in space do. And he's got a sort of uh, the handsome, self-obsessed friend, the Han Solo slash um, Mad Mardigan. Uh, is that right? Is that his name? From Willow. Uh, so it's a, co it's a cross between Han Solo and Willow guy. Uh, and then there's the wizard, and then there's a the little girl or a little kid like uh, Bobby from Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, there's always going to be like a little kid. Now, I remember it being... The wizard was somehow related to the father who went missing, right? I remember that. I remember the father had created a plant. The plant turned evil, turned against him. Kind of like Little Shop of Horrors or something. Um, and the... The plant guy, I thought, kidnapped the father, locked him up or something, you know, kind of, uh, I don't know, well, whatever, locked him up. And they were trying to hunt him down. And I thought the little girl was the granddaughter of the wizard or something like that. Um, and I guess the Han Solo guy, I thought, was hired by the dad as well. No, totally wrong. So never really understand what the connection is between Jace and the wizard and the little girl, in fact. Uh, 
I'm sure somebody does know out there, and I've missed it, but um, please let me know at our Instagram page. You can DM me at those WT days. Get in touch and tell me if you know the answer to this. But it's just the most bonkers piece of premise, right? Okay, I get it. It's the 80s. They've made this toy line. Uh, they've got a bunch of um, battle vehicles, right? There's a good set of battle vehicles called the Lightning League, and they're white and beige and gold, and they've got lasers on and stuff. Cool. And you can take the lasers off, and you can put them on other things. You can switch around the weapons. Okay, very good. And then the bad guys are black and purple and green, and their motif is they're vehicles, right? But get this, they're a plant hybrid. They're a mutant plant hybrid with machines. Okay, so just that pitch alone for the, the toys is bonkers, right? I don't know how that got greenlit. Okay, but then they've got to have the task of making a cartoon to sell it, right? But they made the toys first. So you don't get any action figures um, of this show, which is a real shame. They just, they have like tiny little driver figures. You can go and watch uh, this story on Toy Galaxy. That he does a much better job than I ever will. But I'll give you my take on it, right? Why this is nuts. Let me just have a sip of whiskey here. Ah, okay. So... Let's let's look at this, right? Thundering across the stars to save the universe from the monster minds. Jace searches for his father to unite the magic roots and lead his lightning league to victory over the changing form of Zarbaz. As a kid, I always thought the villain's name was Zarbaz. Really cool name. Z-A-R-B-O-R-Z, I thought. No, his name is Sorbos. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yes, I see. So that that buzz saw at the back of the logo, that's because of Saw Boss, Saw Boss, the leader of the Plant Men, the Monster Minds. Uh, has a saw when he changes into a car. He doesn't have one when he's in sort of humanoid form. But when he changes into a car, he chooses a saw as his weapon. Okay. Again, I don't know where the machine element comes into it. Jace's father, Auric, I think his name is, uh, was trying to create plants, a plant that reproduced itself to stop hunger. Right? Really good idea. But unfortunately, the solar flare mutated the plant and the plant turned on its creator okay that's yeah sure okay got that that happens um i can get that get behind that but where does the it, it mutates into a monster okay F sounds fair enough and he's a uh, he's walking around he's a monster he's he's sentient being he's intelligent but then he can mutate into... Well, first of all, he can reproduce uh, on his own. He can create life. He can create other monster mind men, right? And then each one of those monster mind men can turn into a, a machine, into a battle vehicle with metal and computer parts. And you can see, like, the steering wheel inside them. And you think, well, what's the point of that? What's the point of a steering wheel when you can move yourself... In fact, why, what, why not just, couldn't you just turn into like a sort of organic car? I mean, why do you need to turn into a car at all? Why not just, just be a monster and just, just, can't you just run fast or something? Yeah, it's just weird. It's really weird. Anyway. <laughs> oh, why am I thinking about it so much? This is what we do here on Those Are The Days. Um, that's right, Creasy, I'm pulling you down with me and taking you with me. Um, wheeled warriors explode into battle. Lightning strikes. Okay. Yeah, so 
there is this now on the back of the DVD it explains it a little bit better. Uh, Jace's father is forced to flee from his accidental creations, Saw Boss, and his band of ruthless mutated plant life called the Monster Minds. And then that sentence ends abruptly. Now it's up to Jace, joined by the Vil the Valiant Lightning League, to reunite with his father to and combine the two halves of the magic root amulet. Yeah, that plot point is almost invisible. If you blink, you'll miss that completely. It never really gets explained why there's two halves of the amulet. It, I've yet to understand why, what, what the magic root is, and why it even exists, and why it can stop saw boss and his army forever by the way i didn't remember this part from the show i remembered that there was like this magic he lived in this magic fortress right which looks kind of like a cross between the terror dome from ninja turtles and the castle from crawl the 80s fantasy film um i had forgotten that that castle that he lives in um can teleport across the universe to any destination he likes, right? It can teleport across any destination, to anywhere he wants in the galaxy, as far as I can see. Um, well, you know, I think when you've got that power, you're pretty. it's pretty much a, a checkmate, isn't it, really? Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, and in one of the episodes... They go, the Lightning League land on another planet. And it turns out that this Saw boss has already taken over the galaxy in a sort of, you know, Star Wars Empire fashion. They run the entire galaxy already. And it's like, in the space of what time? The guy, the guy gets created in day one. And then in a month's time, they run the, the galaxy. So I just don't understand... Why the father ran away if Jace has one half of the amulet? Why not just run to Jace and then combine the amulets together? It's totally, totally bonkers nuts. Where did the girl come from? She's made from plants as well. And I thought she was just the granddaughter. No, she's actually made from magical plants. Uh... She looks human because, sure, because why not? Uh, probably the magician had a hand in that. Um, but now I'm helping the writers. And then the little robot guy, is he a robot? Is he an alien in a suit? He looks like a knight in shining armor. He's got a long lance. He's got a magical lance, a six-foot lance. That's handy, isn't it? Hey, get in the car. Can't. Why not? Got a six-foot lance. Oh. You, uh, what's it for? It's a magical lance. Okay, can you can you do anything with it? Not really. I'm a coward. Uh, okay, great. Um, not not really. Uh, not not good, guys. Um, sounds like I hate the show. I don't hate the show. It's 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 well animated enough for its day. Um, and I love the Haim Saban Shuki Levy, which is why it's in this episode. But uh, it's bonkers nuts. It makes no sense whatsoever. And it doesn't get concluded. What a shame. Oh, and did I mention that the little girl rides around on a giant flying fish? Yeah. Um, so there you go. And why are they called the Lightning League? You may ask. You may well ask. Um, apparently there was a, a good force that used to battle evil. Much like the Jedi, I suppose. And only the wizard remembers it, and he gives a magic ring to Jace so that he now must uh, lead the Lightning League. Okay, great. The Lightning League is what? A little cowardly robot, a girl made of plants, and a, a juggernaut, uh, like a guy who owns a spaceship that transports cargo across the spaceship, who they conned into the, into the adventure, by the way. The poor guy makes his living from shipping stuff across the galaxy. They con him into it. They trick him into it. They never pay him. 
and they've they never seem to get he never does get any money and bah, <laughs> it's just bonkers nuts all right well that's been my 15 minute kind of review slash retrospective slash rant about jace and the wheel the warriors thank you for listening if you've bothered to listen to the end of this episode i'll leave you with a song or a track or something and that's been my conversation and those were the days.